Hi guys, it's Tara, the Crafty Sugar Addict here. Today I'm going to do another mail art tutorial for Viva Las Vegas stamps. This is going to be a nice masculine or man themed card. Be great for Father's Day coming up or somebody's birthday, just kind of any occasion, anybody who loves vintage. So I just really like this look and feel. It's simple and it's a little different than the order I typically do things in, so I hope you guys have fun following along and playing today. These are all Viva Las Vegas stamps, and I will have a link in the blog post below for all the stamps if you want to purchase any of them or to kind of look at them in better detail. So let's get started. This is your standard A2 envelope again, or the whatever the one-fourth of a size piece of paper is, so half a card. So I've got a plain one here, and we're going to start off by, of course, masking off where we want our address label to be. I just pointed at the other one, which you guys can't even see. So, let's put that down. And I'm going to actually forget to grab a marker. And I like to outline mine just because if, I, if my card slips or moves out of place, then I want to know where to put it back. So this is just a plain micron in black, and I'm using, this one is a number eight. I think I used a three or two on the last one, so it's nothing particular what size it is. You can use any black marker that you have. This is just what happens to be sitting on my desk. I love microns. They seem to write really well for me and not dry out very fast. And that noise you hear in the background, apparently my cat decided to come in and play with its toy. So I apologize for that ahead of time. Alright, so we've got that outlined so you guys can see if for some reason this were to slide, I can easily put it directly back where it belongs. Now what we're going to do differently, typically we work front to back when I do envelopes. I do the focal image, which would be this, and then I work to the background. Today we're actually going to create the background first and then stamp on top. That's one of the beauties of silhouette stamps. I absolutely love that you can do your background first and see if it turns out the way you wanted. And then if it doesn't, you can toss it and do another one. Although I'm sure that just about everything can be salvageable, so... Although you'd be surprised. I have a tub of envelope errors. Oh, and this ink I'm using today, to start with, is Stampin' Up in Crumb Cake. So this is from my fabulous friend Tiffany. She gave me a couple of these. I bought the next color I'm going to use is soft suede. So in case I forget to tell you that, and I've got my blending tool today, and I'm just gonna lay down a nice soft base color. And I'm sorry if this moves the camera. I actually have the re-inker for this from her, so I need to really re-ink it because I like my stamps to be a little bit juicier. I don't want a heavy color to start with, so that's why we're starting with this. It's just a hint of color. And we'll just move that all around and get some get some grunginess to start. Now these are water-based inks, um, very similar to distress inks. You can do any of those water droplet effects with them. It still works really well. Okay, so we got to see a nice grungy background. You can see that there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and leave it open for a second. Typically, I like to close my inks right away. But I have a challenge with opening these sometimes. This is the other one here. This is the soft suede. And I want to take, and I want to stamp our top image here. So I'm going to ink that up really quick. I'm get a nice layer on here. You know, actually, I don't think soft sweet what I used on that. Let me stamp that on some scrap paper really quick, guys. It is not. Okay. Just kidding. We're not going to do that one yet. I know you guys are thinking a little nuts right now. We're going to do the finish the background pieces for the numbers. So the soft suede is actually used for this nice ledger stamp here. And we're going to use that to create a nice backdrop here. So it's a hair darker than the other. I'm just going to take that and set it over top of the envelope and I'm just going to press down on it. It doesn't need to be 
mounted just because I don't want it to be perfect. Just kind of take it and throw some extra ink here and there. Okay, and I want a little bit more over here, but I don't want a lot over there. So we'll just kind of put a tiny bit of ink over here. Okay, perfect. So we've got a little texture to the background now. So we'll set that one to the side. And I want to actually darken this up just a little bit. So I'm going to grab some of that soft suede coming out from the center again. Just put a little bit here. Oh, we'll put a little bit over here. Why not? And you'll notice this envelope will get a lot darker as we go because I'm going to add more and more layers. Okay. So let me close these really quick. Next, we are going to do that stamp that I was showing you a second ago across the top, our top border stamp. And I actually want walnut stain for that. I should have realized when I looked at that. And that is the Distress Ink. So I want something really dark because I want it to really stand out. So that is the Distress Walnut Ink. Okay, so let's line that up. Okay, we'll go there. And I used this um, this block here is actually for sewing. I think I found it on Tuesday mornings. And I like the grid marks on it. So I line it up that way so that I know that I at least go off the top of the envelope. If you don't, that's okay. It doesn't really matter. You can just throw some ink on the top. Okay, so we've got our texture up there now. Now I want to do that same thing with my dictionary page background. And what I'm going to do, I'll see if I can do this on camera so you guys can see here. Let me look at this to see if I can get the letters going the right direction here. Usually I don't pay attention. The letters are kind of crazy and never going the right direction probably. So I'm just going to go and add a little ink to the side of that. You can see and just line it up down the side. It doesn't have to be particular. I just want to, I don't want to have the lines in the stamp. So I just want different parts and pieces of it. And, you know, let's do the center section, why not? And, okay. So with that, we're starting to get a nice base build up. And, you know, let's go ahead and add some scattered straw. Just to give it a little bit of a warmer color. And then we're going to do our final background, background stamp after that. Is these fabulous numbers here, and I'm gonna stamp those with let's go frayed burlap. Why not? So, this is the distressed frayed burlap, and I'm gonna leave it unmounted. I like the control and just kind of rub it over top of the numbers and just stick them on there, here, there, and everywhere. I like the way that looks. And Vintage Photo is one of my favorite browns and I can't not put some on here so just put a little bit on my sponge dauber and just a little extra color. I really like this to look a little dark. I don't know. If you don't, you guys don't have to do all these layers of browns. Just whatever you like is fine. I don't know. I just really like the the warm grungy look of it, the darker the ink. So. Okay. That I think is a perfect background, so I'm going to stop there. And now we're going to add our focal images. So we're going to use that the silhouette of the men that I had on that side. So we're going to go ahead and I'm using 
my stays on ink. Any black ink that you have, because it's a silhouette stamp, you want something that's going to be whatever your juiciest black ink is. And I'm trying to think which ones I refilled the most recent, and I think it's the stays on. So that's where we're going because I want a solid black image. Now, if your image does not stamp a nice solid black, remember what I typically do is I use that VersaMark marker to fix that, and you can. I actually think that's what I did on my original because I used a different ink pad for that one. So just stamp this on here. And actually my Memento Lux inks are great for this. The black is always pretty solid, but it takes a little longer to dry, so for videos I just don't use it. Okay, so that's a pretty decent stamped image. We'll leave that there. And now we can take off our mask. And you can see we've got a nice address label. I want to add the stitching stamp in here. Same thing, I'm going to use that stays on jet black. And I just like the stitching. I think it feels like it pulls the envelope together and holds that on. So I want to go a little bit on and a little bit off of the label. So the label looks like it's actually stitched as part of the envelope. So there we go. So that's stitched on there now. And I'm going to use another one of my favorites, that Deliver 2. And I know you guys have seen me use this before, but I just really like having it on there. So doing this backwards, I'm stamping the ink pad. I know that's bad. Oh well. Okay. And we're just going to stamp that on there. And you can get away with that on small stamps. Right, let's put the lid back on this. And I believe that's it. The only thing I did different in the first envelope is I actually went around this with the vintage photo distress marker to make that really pop and let's see if I can go out a little bit so I really didn't think it made that much of a difference if you guys can see here this is the old one this is the new one and I just really like it um, without it even usually I do a gray and actually I'll do a gray just so you guys can see I do like the gray look on the inside, this is a gray Prismacolor in PB109. It's not going to focus. There we go. And so if you just go on the inside, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm literally just going around in a loose manner here. And if you go a little in and a little out of it, it even helps a little bit. And that does help it to pop out a little bit more. And I still feel like the gray made it pop a little bit more than the brown. So there you guys have it. Something simple. I hope you like it. Come back uh, come back over to join us for the next Mail Art Mondays. And if you pop down to the Viva Las Vegas blog, leave a comment on something you'd be interested in seeing. If you want to see more like this, or if there's a particular theme you're just stumped on, or maybe there's a stamp. If I have it, I can try to work it into something. Um, I know that somebody did ask me about how I stored my Viva Las Vegas stamps, and I do plan on doing a video soon, so check back for that. I'm trying to organize my studio, and I have been in the process of reorganizing my stamps for a while, so I do think I have it almost done. Alright guys, thanks for joining me. Have a great day.